Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Great to see you back. And finally, after a lot of requests, we have James Brasser again with us. He was a super duper blockbuster hit six months back when I had come from India. And now when I'm going to India for vacation, now I have ensured that he's there. He said that he will be coming after Mercury goes direct because he is very much cautious about <laughs> the astrological positions, as you know, because of his experience. So today he will be sharing uh, important things like he will be sharing the charts of Srinivasan Ramanujan. As we all know, he was uh, one of the greatest mathematicians and he was from India and some other great personalities. And he will be showing about maths and Venus. So all over to you, sir. Welcome to Exotic Astrology. Thank you. So um, I noticed that somebody mentioned in one of the comments that they, they were surprised to hear that Venus represents math. And they asked, where did that knowledge come from? I cannot remember exactly where I heard it or read it, um, but it is definitely the case when you see a prominent, math, uh, a prominent Venus in the 10th house or a stationary Venus. When you see Venus, Venus represents math. Um, and I was, I was very stunned by this. I thought, how, why would Venus be math? But I kept see after I heard that, I kept seeing it over and over. So I went to look at famous mathematicians and I don't know most of these mathematicians, but we all know Albert Einstein, um, anybody from the East certainly knows Ramanujan. Um, and of course, math people over here know him as well. He was spectacular. And his horoscope is extraordinarily spiritual. And he actually said, he actually said that his information came from God. His, in, 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 in fact, I went to Wikipedia and it said that, uh, Srinivas Ramanujan credits his mathematical findings to the goddess of Namagiri. Namagiri is a form of Hindu goddess Lakshmi worshipped in Namagiri, a city all, also called Namakal in modern Tamil Nadu. Um, and he said, uh, he said, while I was asleep, I had an unusual experience. There was a red screen formed by flowing blood, as it were. I was observing it. Suddenly a hand began to write on the screen. I became all attention. That hand wrote a number of elliptic integrals. They stuck to my mind. As soon as I woke up, I committed them to, to writing. And then R Ramanujan's mother said that she received permission from Nam Namagiri Thayar from Ma Ramanujan to go to England. In a, she got that information that her son should go to England. She got that in a dream. So his horoscope is quite fascinating. Um, Venus is in its own sign, Libra, in the fifth house, yeah. the house of poor Vapunya, past life credit, the house of the mind. And basically, there's no, there's no afflictions to Venus that I can see, except that it's in a bad nakshatra. It's in Vishaka, which is a very difficult nakshatra. So should I share the screen now? Yes. Okay, just yes, a second. Okay. He was born December 22nd, 1887, 6.20 p.m. Yeah, in Erode, India, E-R-O-D-E, India. So this horoscope is very, very pronounced because, you know, as I said, Venus is in its own sign in the fifth house, the house of the mind. But also notice that Venus rules the 12th house, the house of Moksha. And the 12th house ruler is Venus in its own sign in the house of past life credit. And Jupiter and Mercury, two benefics, also aspect that 12th house and Ketu as well aspects the 12th house. So the 12th house for spiritual energy is very, 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 very strong. But I'm mentioning this also, you know, mainly because of Venus. Uh, we won't put up the charts yet of the other people, but I will tell you, Albert Einstein 
had Venus in the 25th degree of Pisces. Venus is considered exalted in the 27th degree of Pisces. So this means that Venus was extremely close to its highest point of exaltation in Einstein's chart. And he was a great mathematician. Venus also rules his fifth house as well, house of the mind. And then there's another mathematician, we'll put up the chart in a few minutes, of John Nash. They, uh, they made a movie of John Nash about, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, I think it was, called A Beautiful Mind, A Beautiful Mind. And John Nash had, Ven had Venus in Taurus, Venus in its own sign in Taurus. But he also had a very afflicted Venus. So his, he had mental problems because Venus rules the fifth house and Venus is afflicted. We'll talk about that in a minute. But as far as the Ramanujan chart, this is, um, this is a fascinating chart. And the, the ability to deal with details comes from his sixth house. The sixth house is holding Mercury and Jupiter and is aspected by Rahu. Um, Mercury in the sixth house is a person that's very, very good with writing and teaching and picking things apart. They're very, Mercury in the sixth house makes a person a perfectionist. Jupiter is in the, uh, the sixth house as well. Um, in my earlier books, I spoke about I always mentioned in my earlier books that when Jupiter and Mercury were conjunct, it was a very good aspect because they're both benefics. However, however, as the years went on, after about 15, 20 years in astrology, I started to notice that when Venus and Jupiter are closely conjunct, they, they have problems. Yes, they are both benefics, but Jupiter and Mercury conjunct do not work very well together. This is not a tight conjunction of Mercury and Jupiter, but, but it's interesting because Ramanujan died uh, at the age of, I think, 32. He's very, very, very young. He died, he died just as his Venus Dasha was beginning. So he never got to his Venus Dasha, or maybe he got to Venus for uh, uh, three or four weeks, and then he was dead. Um, it's not, in my opinion, that Venus killed him, no. The Mercury in the sixth house is the problem. He died of um, uh, some bacteria, which is, which is Mercury, uh, the lungs and the bacteria. And Mercury is in the sixth house, the house of health, poorly aspected by Rahu because Rahu, <coughs> Rahu is 19 degrees of Cancer, Mercury is 23 degrees of Scorpio. So it's a cl close aspect from Rahu. And I think that the Jupiter aspect, even though Jupiter is far away from Mercury, I don't think that Jupiter helped that Mercury. And that's what he died of, Mercury ailments, the lungs. Um, the uh, but but what what is most remarkable to me in this horoscope is the poor of Apunya with Venus, the past life credit connected to Venus, which is mathematical ability, and and also there there is a strong career house, but uh, the the moon is in the tenth house, which is career. Whenever the moon is in the tenth house, a person likes to be the center of attention. They like. They have a good ability to be in the public eye and things like that. Um, and this 10th house is strong because the moon is there, which is a benefic. It was not a full moon or a new moon. It was right in between. So it was bright enough and it was waxing. But the moon is aspected within seven degrees by Jupiter in Jupiter's own sign, Pisces. So this is a very... This is actually a very strong moon in the 10th, so he could definitely gain fame. And then Mars aspects the 10th house as well, which I think gives him mechanical or technical skills. I have no idea 
you know, whether he used mechanical or technical skills in his abilities, but uh, I mean, in, 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 in his work, but the abilities were definitely there. I read that he did not like school when he was younger. And you can notice the second house is afflicted. Two malefics in the second house, Saturn and Rahu. Saturn poorly placed in Cancer because it's opposite its own sign, Capricorn. And Rahu in the second house is a very poor placement. Rahu and Saturn, two malefics in the second house, are not good for family life. Uh, he was very poor. In fact, um, he, needed, he needed an operation uh, earlier on, I think when he was 15 or 16. I, I'm not positive, but in his younger years, he needed an operation. They couldn't afford it, so a doctor said he would do it for free. But they didn't have much money. Um, it is fortunate that Jupiter aspects the second house with those malefics. That definitely is helping. So he could focus on education and knowledge. But mainly his abilities came psychically. They came intuitively. They did not come from the normal, uh, you know, the normal means. They didn't come from teachers and things like that. They came very, very psychically. And this is an amazing spiritual chart. To my mind, the saddest thing is that he died early because the Venus Dasha would have been spectacular. And I want to mention something. There is a technique known as the great years of the planets. The great years of the planets, which most teachers do not, most astrologers ignore this. And this to me is, is, is very, very uh, negligent because the, the great years of the planets are so important. But I want to mention that the great year for Venus is the 25th year. So the great years of the planets means that in the same way that in America, a person becomes an adult at 18, in Israel, a person, beco a person becomes an adult at the age of 13. The planets are like that too. They have an age where they, they have one year where they come of age. So the 25th year of life, which means age 24 to 25, is the great year for Venus. And you will notice, if you look in the lives of mathematicians, oftentimes around that time, 24, between 24 and 25 is when they become famous, is when their math is at its peak. Um, the, uh, the other great years of the planets, Jupiter is the 16th year, the sun is the 22nd year. That means from 21 to 22 is the sun. From 15 to 16 is Jupiter. The moon is the 24th year from 20, 23 to 24. Venus, the 25th year. Mars is the 28th year between 27 and 28 is Mars. Mercury is the 32nd year between 31 and 32. Mercury comes of age. And uh, Saturn is between 35 and 36. It's the 36th year. The um, Rahu matures in the 42nd year, Ketu in the 48th year. Just in general, you'll see people gain power in the 42nd year of life because of Rahu. You'll see people become more psychic and metaphysical because of the Ketu maturing in the 48th year. The other planets, though, you have to be very cautious because if Mercury is highly afflicted, then in the 32nd year, the person will have big problems. If uh, uh, you know Venus is very harmed, then in the 25th year of life, they will have problems. But when the planet, um, actually um, what I'm speaking of mainly here when I say about having problems is, is um, if one of those planets rules the ascendant. So in other words, if Mercury rules the ascendant and in the 32nd year, uh, uh, the person comes of age, if that Mercury is fallen, aspected badly, and it rules the ascendant, then that year is a very bad year. If Venus rules the ascendant and the 25th, and is very afflicted, the 25th year of life will be very difficult. But you'll also notice when you look at the planet that rules the ascendant for the great years, you'll notice that many people, the year that the ascendant ruler comes of age, they will find their career, not find their career, but they will assert their independence and do what they wanted to do. Many people will get divorced the year that the ascendant, more in America, not 
you know, where divorce is more common, the person may be putting up with a lot of things they don't want to put up with, but then the, the planet that matures comes of age, they feel their confidence, and then they make the move that they need to make. With this horoscope, it would be pretty clear to any astrologer, I think, that Mercury was going to have problems health-wise. Mercury rules the ascendant, and it's in the sixth house. It's in a, not Jeshta, not a good nakshatra, but it's in the sixth house, which is a bad house, aspected tightly by Rahu, and then there's a Jupiter aspect. So people would expect the confidence not to be so strong from the Mercury. They would expect Mercury problems, lungs, intestines, nervous system. They would expect that. But the early death, I would not in a million years, I would not have seen an early death. First of all, the eighth house is strong enough for a long life. Saturn throws an aspect onto its own sign, Capricorn. Um, I just don't see, you know, I don't see early death from the eighth house or from the natal Saturn. Yes, yeah, Saturn's afflicted, but it's also aspected by Jupiter in Jupiter's exaltation sign. So to me, if he had lived at a time perhaps, you know, lived later when the doctors had more knowledge of these. They didn't know about the illness that he had back then. Um, but if he had, uh, you know, lived in a, a more advanced time, I think he wouldn't have died so early. But I don't see the, I don't see the, 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 the early death. Now, one thing that is interesting is that he, <clears throat> he died in the, uh, let me see, what year was it? It was, he was 30, it was, he was right at the age of 32. So Mercury rules the ascendant, and Mercury has its great year between 31 and 32. So we would expect between 31 and 32 to be a difficult year because Mercury in a Durshtana, Mercury in a bad nakshatra, aspected by Rahu, we would expect that to be a difficult year. So uh, that's mainly what I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to show one horoscope where, you know, most of the, most of the planets in this chart have some mixture. Uh, moon is good, but it's aspected by Mars, which is not so good. Um, you know, Jupiter and Mercury both have afflictions from Rahu, um, all the planets have afflictions. Do you see the one planet that has no affliction is Venus? Yes, yes. Not only no affliction, but it's in its own sign. Now let's take a look at Albert Einstein. Yeah, uh, can... I would like to ask you one question. Yes. So when you say that uh, activation year is like the time when the planet matures, so uh, apart from the natural significations, for example, Venus's relationships, uh, but do you also see that the lordships get uh, very heavily influenced? Like, for example, Mars 28th year, and suppose Mars rules the 4th house for a Capricorn ascendant and the 11th yes. house. So do you see... I'll tell you, a sto the I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the story that, that made that point, so I could, I could never forget it. Oh. Because, because when I went into the Rahu Dasha, it was a tremendous upheaval for me I got divorced, my father died, but at the same time, I had these very, very powerful intuitions and a sense of destiny. And when that happened, I had a sense that I would have some fame or some recognition. I didn't know in what way. My life was about uh, meditation, spiritual. My life was about astrology, but I didn't know where the recognition would come to, but I had a very strong sense of it. Four, three, three, four, five years went by. There was no fame. There was no recognition. And yet those thoughts were still there. When I went to India the second time, my second mentor, PM Padia, um, he looked at my chart. I was in a room with five or six astrologers, six, seven or eight astrologers. He looked at my chart. He said, you got married when you were 21 or 23. I was startled. I said, that's the man I want to teach me. The very first night he came to my room, he came to my room in a hotel in Bombay. 
And within five minutes, I said, look, something has been bothering me for five years. I said, I've always had the sense that I would have some recognition, some career, something, but nothing ever happens. This was 1984. So I was about 34 years old, 33, 34. And he said, I think I was 33. And he looked at it and he said, you will get fame, but not until the 36th year. I said, why? He said, because Saturn rules the career house. And Saturn is very strong because my Saturn is in the fifth house, which is poor Vipunya and aspected to the degree within one degree by Jupiter. So he said, you're poor Vipunya. Your past life credit is to gain some recognition because the 10th ruler is in the fifth house with good aspect. And he said, after 35, 36, then. I wrote my book in 1985. It came out in 1986. It came out when I was 35 years old. So it was 35, 36, the 36th year. That's when it matured. Another, an, another story is uh, uh, the, the reason I went back to India. After I, I studied with Santanam. I used astrology for a year, and then I ran into an old friend from high school. We were both 30 years old now. I said, come to my house. I'll look at your horoscope. I'm telling him his dashas and his buktis and his horoscope, and I said, oh, so you were in a good period over here. Um, you were in a good period, uh, so you must have had a good year that year. He said, really? That's when I tried to commit suicide. I am not kidding you now. The next day, the very next day, I decided I'm going back to India. I cannot, I can't do this. I cannot tell somebody <laughs> they had a good period. And he tells me he committed one, he tried to commit suicide. And I still didn't know why. When I got to Padia the second time, he told me about the great years of the planets. Then I looked at his Mercury. He was in his 32nd year. His Mercury was in the eighth house combust with the sun and Mars, something like that, very bad Mercury, in the eighth house. He, he, had, uh, he had a Virgo ascendant, so Mercury is in the eighth house in Aries with Mars, with Saturn, something like that. So, yeah, so these are very, those are very important influences. They're easy to miss, but they're important. Now, one thing also, if a person has a Capricorn or Aquarius ascendant, I always tell those people, you have, a, you have a benefit that most people don't have. Most people will know who they are fully when their planet matures, which will be 32 for Mercury, 28 for Mars, right? You will not know your full power until the 36th year. So this means you have more time to develop your power, to develop like that. Okay. That's very important. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing I wanted to ask is uh, when you are seeing this, like, as you said, in this case, that 32nd year can be difficult that because Mercury has been afflicted and it is in a Dustana. So uh, have you seen in your experience that, like, for example, in this chart, because Saturn is, I guess it's a Gemini Lagna. Yeah. Yeah. So like Saturn is ruling one of the trines in this chart. So, Suppose uh, Saturn and Mercury were in mutual aspect, suppose. So then uh, apart from the fact that it is a natural malefic and it is as aspecting Mercury and afflicting it, have you also seen sometimes that being the ninth Lord, it can give some good benefits related to the ninth house? Or have you just seen that oh, only the affliction is working apart from the Raj Yogas like fourth Lord in fifth or fifth Lord in tenth, something like this? I tend to go more by whether a planet is afflicted. You know, the, the, the thing is that Saturn, like in, in, like in Ram, Ramanujan's chart, Saturn rules the ninth house, but it also rules the eighth house. So it's not, <laughs> it doesn't make it particularly good. It, yes. It's very, it's very odd because for, for the, Gemini ascendant, Venus is a good planet, even though it rules the 12th. Yes. 12th and 5th. So the, the, the ancient sages, they saw which planets. 
uh, to me, Saturn for a Gemini ascendant doesn't do much good. It just doesn't, even though it rules the ninth house. Um, so, you know, to me, I go a little bit more by, by the planets. Mutual reception could have some effect when it's there, you know, but um, it depends on the, depends on the houses involved and depends on the signs involved. A lot of yeah. people have uh, Mars and Cancer fallen and the moon and Scorpio fallen. And they think that because moon and Mars exchange signs, it's wonderful. It's terrible because the signs involved are no good. Okay. Yeah. And another thing I want to ask you here, like in his case, he, in case of Ramanujan, as we all know that there was not much success when he was in India. I mean, of course he went from India, but his grandeur came about when he was in the West. So, uh, how do you see that that uh, he has to go abroad and by that he will get such a fame which lasts for millennia? So how do you see anything like that which is not there in his home country? You know, you know, the the thing about this horoscope is that he was not going to gain gain fame very quickly. Okay. Because the ascendant ruler is weak. Okay. You know, the the tenth house is very strong. The moon is there, aspected by Rahu and Jupiter and Mars. It's energizing that, you know, quite a bit. Um, I think, to me, I don't see any particular benefit to him being in a foreign country. To me, whatever fame he got from the West, he would have gotten in India. It, to me, it wouldn't have mattered. Eventually, eventually he would have to have fame, even though on the personality level, the personality would be very shy or timid, would not be a strong personality, I don't think. The Mars moon aspect could give his personality some intensity, but the ascendant ruler is, I think, not, not so strong. Yeah, and in your last video, when you had come to my channel six months back, so there you had said that, uh, sometimes people have benefits in the first house, but that gives them fame. And sometimes yeah. they have in the 10th house, so that gives them fame. Right. So in your experience. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes both. Yeah, luckily. So uh, in your experience, what you have seen, which one of them works more? Have, do you have any experience or do you think it works equally? I think it works equally. And my preference, <laughs> my preference <laughs> would be to gain fame based on the 10th house, which means that your work is great. Yes. I, that's just personal. I would have rather have great, great work, great status coming from the efforts versus just from look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, you know, big okay. personality. Um, but, but it, it works either way. Like Al Pacino is a very famous actor. But he couldn't get, he was nominated, I don't know, five, six, seven times before he got an Oscar, the Academy Award, because the first house is very weak. Mm. His 10th house is strong, but the first house is very weak. So he didn't, you know, he, he didn't get the attention that he should have. The same with, we have a very famous director, Steven Spielberg. This man made more money in films than anybody. The huge, huge films didn't get an Oscar for a long time because his, his first house is very weak, but his 10th house is very strong. So if I'm doing a, if I'm doing a horoscope for a person with that situation where they have very little confidence, but a strong career, I tell them, look, you could be famous. You can gain great recognition. Just focus on the career. Don't, don't, don't think about your confidence. Because some people, they think, well, I'm no good, I'm no good. So they don't do the work, you know. Yeah, and uh, regarding this only, I wanted to ask you, like last time you had uh, said that sometimes you can, I, I remember the statement as it is, you had made that sometimes you can see Saturn spoiling the chart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, some people told me to ask you that, what do you mean by Saturn spoiling the chart? I mean, on an astrological perspective. Oh my God, I see it all the time.